Am I starting? Yes. <laughs> Oh, we right. can get started. <laughs> I can get started. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. It's kind of strange not to be able to see any of you, but I understand there are hundreds of virtual people out there in the world. That's what they're telling me anyway. Um, so my name's Stacy, and I am going to be talking today about maximizing the strategic the strategic impact of your volunteer program in your organization. Um, so I've I've pitched this um, presentation at um, senior managers, at executive directors, at CEOs, at boards, but uh, it's also this is a really uh, hopefully a valuable thing for people who are actually coordinating and managing volunteers to see, because this is the kind of thing that I talk to your senior managers and your boards and your CEOs about. Um, so hopefully you'll get a sense of how you can present your own work and the value of your own work in the organization that you're working with. So. This is me. I am the Executive Director of Community Volunteer Connections, which is a volunteer center out in Coquitlam, BC, Canada. I'm also the Vice President of Volunteer BC, which is the umbrella group for volunteer centers across BC, and there's about uh, 25 of us that are active. Um, my background is I have a master's in counseling, um, and I have uh, 10 years experience uh, working directly in volunteer engagement, and uh, specifically around strategic strategic volunteer community deployment, which is fancy words for I run a volunteer center. I'm also a very good aunt. As you can see, I put rocks on the face of my small niece, which I think makes me an expert at anting. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I thought I would start off with the classic definition of terms, strategic. So strategic is relating to the identification of long-term or overall aims and interests and the means of achieving them. And I pulled this definition, um, not just to be annoying, because I know this is something that almost every, every uh, PowerPoint presentation starts with, but really I wanted to give you the sense that what this is about when we're talking about volunteer engagement, we're talking about where you want your organization to be in three years, five years, 10 years. Um, this is how volunteer engagement relates to the future of your organization um, and becomes part of plans that might take years for you as an organization to really nail down and, and achieve. The kinds of strategic goals that organizations set for themselves are things like creating a brand and a mission that's easily recognized and supported by the general public. So there's a lot of marketing that goes into there. There's a lot of strategic thought that goes into there. Uh, you, might be want, you might want to be the trusted authority in your area of influence with key decision makers. So if there is a question about your area of expertise, you want the government to come to you. You want the school board to come to you and find out what should be done. Um, you want to be able to attract and retain talented and high performing staff. You want to be able to sustain funding and resources that allow your organization to thrive. But all of these strategic goals are there for a reason. They're there to allow your organization to make the impact necessary to change the world. That's what you're going for. So whatever it is, whatever your mission and your vision is, all your strategic goals have to do with making that impact that you need in order to change the world to meet your mission and vision. Volunteers are your impact generators. And this is what they are as a strategic resource. So they are a key resource in any strategy that, uh, that you have. Um, they, the research shows us, and this is research from um, the, the uh, Canadian government, that volunteer programs, having volunteer programs, expand the impact of your organization by 60%. And we have some really recent um, research that's coming out of Delo oh, I'm going to get their names, but I'm going to pronounce their name wrong and they're going to be mad at me. Ugh, Deloitte? I don't know. Anyway, these guys who you've all heard of, um, they just did a 2010 research paper that looked at organizations that think about volunteer engagement as a strategic part of their organization. Um, and I'd like to contrast that 
vision of volunteer engagement with what you may know as the magical elves theory of volunteers, which is volunteers are magical elves that are free because they work for free. And therefore, you know, you can kind of call up your coordinator of volunteers and say, I need 20 volunteers tomorrow. Is that going to be a problem? And they will just magically have them appear because volunteers are magical. Um, having worked in the volunteer center world for a long time and interacted with many managers of volunteers, if you're not in fact a manager of volunteers, you may be surprised to know that that is pretty much the most common request that we get in the field. Um, but we know that volunteers are people, they're not magical elves, that they take a lot of work and energy to organize and, and uh, to, to, to get the best out of what they offer for your organization. And organizations that really take that seriously and, and, and build volunteer engagement into their organizational planning as a strategy, they excel at that volunteer engagement. They leverage volunteers and skills at all levels. So at the front line, they engage volunteers well. Uh, in their fundraising, they engage volunteers well. In their consulting, they engage volunteers well. They engage them all up and down all of the needs that you have as an organization. They have a 600% increase in the return on investment in terms of what their volunteers are able to do. So that's 600% uh, more return on investment by having your volunteers managed um, strategically versus having them managed in a more ad hoc fashion. And they can more effectively address needs. You see organizations um, run much leaner. So it takes about, about half the budget to run the same kinds of programs. Um, and they are better positioned to grow, adapt, or sustain. So when you look at all of those advantages of, of, of volunteer engagement as a strategy, you can see that those kinds of advantages really do cross all of the kinds of strategic goals you might have as an organization. I want to talk a little bit about exactly how volunteers become the hidden impact generator in your organization. And I'm going to look at human resource contributions, financial contributions, public relation contributions, and quality contributions. So human resources. First of all, your volunteers obviously provide direct human resources. So they uh, provide frontline program delivery. Uh, if they are on your crisis lines, they're your crisis line workers. If they are in your food bank, they're helping people, um, you know, they're actually giving out the food. Uh, if they're on your Meals and Wheels program, they're driving around, they're delivering the food. So in a lot of ways, they really are, you know, a, 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 the, the very front line of what you're doing in the community. They're also very involved in fundraising work. Those are both the ones that your organization claims in terms of they're running your own fundraising event, but they're also uh, lots of third-party fundraising that happens where you just provide them some information and a couple of logos and maybe some um, um, maybe some collateral to use for their fundraising, and then they just go out and throw a party and give you the money, which is pretty awesome. Um, your volunteers also provide a direct contribution to the governance of your organization when they, when they come on to your uh, organization as a board director. But that's not the only way that volunteers become human resources for your organization. Volunteers become staff on a fairly regular basis. So um, what we know about that is that uh, we haven't got a ton of research on that. But we know from talking to organizations that many, many people who are working in your organization um, are, have been volunteers for your organization in the past. The better your organization is at engaging volunteers, often the more likely you're going to see volunteers hired on as staff. And there's some obvious reasons for that. They're pre-trained. But more importantly, they are already committed to your cause and your organization, of your organization. They already have a heart for it. Um, and I want to comment for a second on the fact that we don't have a lot of research about the, con the rate at which volunteers are converted into staff of nonprofit organizations. It's interesting to me that these are not questions that we study. That's a part of how I, 
how I think of the, the gap in understanding the impact that volunteers really have on our organization is that in a lot of these ways that volunteers contribute, we aren't tracking them. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in finance, in, in volunteers and finances, because that's where it becomes very obvious. So I'd like you to ask yourself, if you think about your volunteers, and many organizations have hundreds or thousands of volunteers, do you know, can you tell me off the top of your head, how much your volunteers as a subsection donated to your organization last year? If you went and you asked your fund developers, could they tell you how much the average volunteer in your organization donates to your organization? Could they tell you how much the average donation of volunteers compares to the overall average or to the average of non-volunteers? Is it more? Is it less? Um, do you know the projected lifetime giving of givers who are in the giving range of your volunteers? Uh, and do you know if your volunteers have a bigger lifetime giving? Um, uh, average. Uh, these are all questions that when you start to think of it, think of them, give you a sense of how under, how, how poorly understood the linkages are between what your, how your volunteers are actually contributing to your organization. There's a myth out there that people give their time instead of their money. But that's a myth. That's just something that, that sounded good at one point. The fact is, though, is your volunteers are people who are passionate about the cause that your organization is advancing. And if they're passionate, they're often going to want to contribute in multiple ways. Um, so these are key questions to be, to be asking and to be finding out the answers to. Volunteers and public relations. So one of the things that you're trying to do as an organization is build a trusted brand identity. Build uh, an identity as, as an organization that is responsive in the community, that understands the community, um, and that your mission and vision for community is valuable and the, really the right thing for your community to be embracing. Whether that is you want to see uh, no kid grow up in poverty or you want to see restorative justice happen, None of those things that we want to achieve as nonprofit organizations happens without the goodwill and the agreement of the community at large. Your volunteers are your key ambassadors. So this is, an, this is a, a, a volunteer who was volunteering at Elizabeth Fry Toronto and has been volunteering there for over 20 years. And she's lovely. She's like a great ambassador. And she's not necessarily um, tapped as an ambassador, although this person is, because that's how I found her. Um, uh, but look at what she says. Friends often say they admire me for what I do. They say I inspire them to think about doing something similar. This makes me so happy. This is a person who wants to talk to her friends about what she does, who wants to share um, your vision for what community should be, and who does so. So um, imagine the power of that as you begin to work that into your branding and your marketing plans, as you think about how to use that kind of uh, passion and commitment to your cause through social media, as you start to think about how you might train her or assist her or mentor her to be a better spokesperson for your cause. Um, and imagine what happens if you don't invest that time in your volunteers. Because whether or not you ask them to or direct them to, they are going to talk about your organization. They are going to talk about their experience at your organization. And they're going to talk about it in very personal and influential and persuasive ways. Because when volunteers are engaged with your organization, they're doing it from the heart. Every volunteer is an ambassador. They're an ambassador for your mission, for your system of values, for your beliefs about how the world should be different. Um, and, uh, and that is a, a huge key resource for any of your marketing and public relation goals. I'm gonna, I, I left this one for last because in a lot of ways I think it's really the, the key and the most important contribution that volunteers make to organizations. Volunteers humanize organizations. 
organizations, they have a real tendency to become bureaucratic um, and hierarchical. It's, it's, it's the nature of, of putting together an organization. An organization is really about controlling everything that happens for a purpose. And the purpose is your mission and vision. So it's not a bad purpose, but it does mean that efficiency is often going to be uh, have a high priority. And volunteers are not necessarily there to make your operations more efficient. They're there to make your operations more human. Um, one of the stories I have that really resonated with me when I heard it was uh, we have a program that works with um, uh, residents in a mental health facility. The mental health facility in our community is really well run. It's, it's a beautiful location. It's in the middle of nature. Um, it's, it, the staff there are incredibly committed to seeing people recover from, uh, from mental illness, uh, to, um, to see them become more socially engaged, community engaged, to get people back on their feet working and living independently in the community. They're really passionate about that, the nurses, the doctors, the occupational therapists. They don't have a lot of time. Our volunteer program, and there, there's about 20 volunteers that's in our program, they have time. So what their role is, is to come in and to, to build relationships with people. So we have, in a 69-bed in a facility, they typically are connected with at least 35 of the residents. And there's another 10 on the list of, of residents that they're making regular contact with in order to encourage them to get connected. So they have a pretty good reach into the, into the residents. Um, and there are always new people coming in, and connecting with them is difficult. So we had one volunteer who um, her, her shift, her two-hour shift, was to sit beside a new woman who had come to the residences who had not spoken a word to anyone in the whole time that she had been there, in the, in the two weeks that she'd been there. And, um, but she colored a lot. And so our volunteer brought some paper and some pencil crayons and sat down and just colored beside her for two hours. There's no nurse that would have had the time to do that. There's no doctor that would have had the time to do that. But our volunteer, that's what she's there for. And she wasn't quite sure that she was doing anything useful, but at the end of that two hours, the resident turned to her and handed her the coloring that she had been doing and said, thank you for coloring with me. And that was the first words that that woman had said in that facility since she'd arrived. The power of having the time to connect is huge in the work that we do. And that is what your volunteers bring to the table. They also bring that passion and joy for the work that it's easy to lose that in the day-to-day -day grind of the work that we do. They are there because they want to be. Um, some days I'm not here because I want to be. <laughs> I'm here at work because I have to be. But my volunteers are always there because they want to be. And you can, you can ride off of that energy uh, if you engage volunteers well to improve your staff morale as well as the overall quality of the services that you provide to the people that you serve. Volunteers are, are very responsible for bringing life and humanity into our organizations. And without that, you, you can't generate the impact you need in order to change the world. So there's this really neat thing that's coming out of the states right now. It's called uh, the Reimagining Service Movement. And it's really embraced the idea that volunteerism is a strategic resource. And it's gone past the idea that it's a, a strategic resource for the organization and talks about it as a strategic resource for the community as a whole. Um, and that makes sense because volunteers are people who not only do they believe in what your organization believes in, they believe that the community as a whole is better when they are out there working to improve it. So they're not sitting back and letting other people do the work of having a great community. They look at the world and they say, oh, I'd like this to change. I think I'll go change it. That's who these people are. <laughs> and it's, it's an amazing thing that there's so many of them. Um, 
the reimagining service summit or uh, pro, uh, approach looks at that energy of volunteerism and decides, you know what, we are all responsible for making sure that that kind of energy and spirit of self-sufficiency and I can do it and if I see something wrong, I can come in and make a difference. Um, that 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 resource is something that the whole community benefits from and the whole community should also defend and support. So they look at it like, well, let's bring together all of the players in community. Let's bring together nonprofits and businesses and education and government and we'll wrap it around this volunteer spirit in our community and support it and, uh, and, and make it more effective. They encourage organizations to make volunteering a core strategic function, not kind of an add-on. Like we have these programs, and it would be great to have volunteers run them, so we're just going to add those in. Um, they encourage the community as a whole to have conversations about where volunteers should be engaged and to begin building partnerships across organizations and across businesses and nonprofits, because businesses now are wanting to see and be seen as more community engaged and what better way to do that than encourage and support the volunteerism of their employees. Principle four is the key key one and this is the one that a lot of times uh, it's easy to to miss. In order to get a return on your investment you have to invest. So you can't get a return on something you haven't invested and volunteer resources takes investment of your organization's staff time and of your organization's resources. And this is a message that the Reimagining Service Group's uh, movement is trying to get out, not just to organizations, because a lot of organizations know this, know that you, you, you can't organize uh, the work of 200 volunteers without having staff uh, time attached to that work. Um, we know that when we're running nonprofit organizations. A lot of times our funders don't know that. They label it as administration and they would like to see volunteers do things all themselves. That is a nice thing in theory, but the fact is, is if you're running a large nonprofit organization, um, you want to be able to go past having self-organizing groups of volunteers, which maybe 10 or 15 volunteers at a time can self-organize. If you want to scale up your results, you need to have some kind of a staff model where your staff can really leverage the impact of your volunteers by providing great recruitment, great management, great supervision, and, uh, and, and really make that experience good for both the organization and the volunteers involved. In order to get a return, you have to invest. So this is a message that, you know, at Volunteer BC, we're certainly telling organizations that, but organizations tell us, yeah, we already know. Can you talk to our funders about that? So we're talking to their funders about that. So <laughs> that's, that's really where we, if you're a funder on the line, uh, we're happy to talk to anybody at any time about what it actually takes in terms of cash and staff resources to run an effective volunteer program. Um, because it does take an investment. It's just that it's worth the investment. So let's talk a little bit about how we generally talk about volunteer programs and demonstrate the investment. And then let's talk about how we really should be talking about the impact of our volunteer program and the kinds of investments we need. So thinking about your volunteer program, whether you're running your volunteer program or you're a CEO or a senior manager and you've got people who are coordinating volunteers uh, for your organization who report to you, what do you know? Generally what you know is the basics. Your, your program involves 60 volunteers a week and those volunteers contribute 12,500 hours per year. So you might know that kind of thing. What you don't know is your impact statistics. And if you do know your impact statistics, awesome, please contact me. I will put you on a list of amazing, I'll give you a gold badge because this is really amazing stuff when you find out about it. So an impact statistic might be, it's, it's actually stuff that you can just calculate with math a lot of the time. Um, our volunteers contributed 12,500 volunteer hours in 2015, a human resource value of 187,500. And that's just timesing it by minimum wage, or by $10 an hour, or, or um, there's different ways
ways of calculating the value of that. You might look at it and go, well, how much would I have to pay somebody if I was getting them to do this particular work, and then times it by that, and suddenly you've got a, a dollar value. And generally, the dollar value will be quite surprisingly large. Our volunteers distributed, distributed 17,000 pounds of food to families in need this year. Wow, that tells you the impact of what your volunteers did. That's a pretty big impact. Our volunteers helped 268 students succeed in school this year with an average rise of 1.5 letter grades per student. Wow, that's kind of impressive. These are all statistics that talk about what your volunteers actually accomplished in the year. And where the basic statistics stop at what they did, the impact statistics tell you the difference that they made. Um, so. If you can begin thinking about the difference you want your volunteers to make and start tracking that, you're going to have a much better argument for why you need investment in your volunteer program. And what do you know about investment in your volunteer resources? So there's a ratio that you want to know. How many hours uh, per week is your manager of volunteer investing in making your volunteer resources hum? Um, and then your output is the hours generated by volunteers. So this is where knowing your hours is really useful. Now you can find out for every hour of time you invest in your manager of volunteers, so the, that 30 hours a week that they work, how many hours of human resources do you leverage out of your volunteers? So here's an example. Um, oh, I don't know if I finished my example. Oh, well. Um, your human resource value, if you've got, uh, uh, um, well, I'm not going to do the math out of my head. Darn it. Oh, well. Uh, this is something that you can actually do pretty easily on your own. You know how many hours a week your volunteer program coordinator works. Um, and uh, you already know the dollar value of, uh, of, of your volunteer labor based on wages. And then uh, for every dollar you invest in your volunteer program, how much money do you get back in HR? So in this situation, um, if you have $187,500 um, of HR value in a year, and you pay a manager of volunteers $25,000 a year, that's actually a pretty cool ratio. So I want to talk quickly about investing in your volunteer resources. Because it's 10.30, I'm just exactly on time here. We're still going to have time for questions at the end. Um, and, and this is, again, a tale of two stories. So you remember I talked about the idea of volunteers as magical elves versus volunteers as strategic resources for your organization. In a similar, we have other parallel stories that we talk that um, that seem really obvious um, and, and intuitive, but then when you actually analyze the story, it starts to break down. So I want to talk about the usual volunteer story. This is usually how we talk about volunteers. And if you think about recruiting volunteers, this will make a lot of sense. The hero of the story is the volunteer. And the hero has a goal. But wait a minute. What is the goal of the hero? Is it to make a difference? Is it to make friends? Is it to get a reference letter? Volunteers have all sorts of different reasons for getting engaged in your organization. Um, so if you start with the, the, the hero of your volunteer program as the volunteer, uh, then you have to take a look at what their goals are. Well, any hero in a good story both has a goal and a barrier to get to their goals. So if you have a volunteer, who's the hero of your story, and their goal is to maybe make a difference, maybe to make some friends, maybe to get a reference letter. Well, what's their barrier? Well, usually the barrier for volunteers is they're really busy, they don't know really how to start, they're not really sure that they want to volunteer, they're not sure it's going to be fun. A lot of times they don't think they have the skills. So it's lots of possible barriers in this volunteer story. Our resolution to this story generally often is to just really yell loudly, please come and volunteer with us. So the usual volunteer story that puts the volunteer at the center, that puts the volunteer there as a hero, it doesn't really make a great story. But 
there's a real volunteer story that happens every day in our organization. Nancy runs a program that pairs young girls up with teen girl mentors. Nancy is your program coordinator. She's your manager of volunteers. And she is the hero of your volunteer program. She has a clear goal and a clear barrier to her goal. There are more kids needing mentors than Nancy has volunteers. This is a real dilemma for Nancy. And she needs a solution for it. And the solution is girls helping girls because you are volunteering. So let's contrast those stories. If your hero is the volunteer, then you have a very confusing story. If your hero is the person who's coordinating those volunteers, is the leader, then your volunteers become your impact generator. They become your solution. They become the resolution to the problem of more kids needing mentors than your organization has volunteers. So what that means is your volunteers are a huge strategic resource in your organization. And your manager of volunteers is also a huge strategic resource in your, in your uh, organization. So the hero is your coordinator of volunteers. The goal is getting done whatever it is your organization wants to get done. The barrier is always there's more to, be, more to do than, than people to do it. And volunteers are the ones who make the difference by following the hero. If that's the case, then you want to have a really strong leader being your coordinator of volunteers. And there are ways that you can invest in building up the skills and the professionalism of leading volunteers. Um, the, uh, the, there's a certification in volunteer administration that's available. Uh, in Canada, there is the Volunteer Management Professionals of Canada, which is uh, the professional organization for leaders of volunteers. In BC, it's AVRBC, which is the Administrators of Volunteer Resources BC. And there's similar ones um, in each province. And in the states, it's ALIVE, the Association for Leaders in Volunteer Engagement. And these groups have been championing, championing the idea that coordinators of volunteers are highly skilled professionals who need a lot of different skills, to bring a lot of different skills to the table to lead and manage and inspire hundreds and thousands of volunteers for your organization. There are other ways that you can invest in leading volunteers. You can actually do some program assessments. Your local volunteer center can do that. There's also some really great free resources available from the JFF, JF Fixler group. And I've got a link there, which I think um, when you get to the PowerPoint slides after this uh, presentation, you'll be able to access that. Uh, I also included a case study from the San Diego Humane Society. Now, this is a journal you have to pay for or an article you have to pay for. But if you're actually interested in learning more about how to assess and uh, understand the impact of your volunteer program uh, and develop a strategic plan around it, um, case studies are just fabulous. So that's, that, that's a really good resource if you're interested in doing that. From um, your role as a board director or a CEO or an executive director, you have a, a huge ability to um, empower those in your organization who lead volunteers. And a part of that is by measuring what they do in a more sophisticated way, measuring that impact that we talked about. Measuring not just the number of hours uh, and the number of volunteers, but how volunteers allow you to serve community and how volunteers are strengthening the organization, either by becoming staff of the organization and making contributions that way, or by, um, by donating um, cash resources or in-kind resources, as well as their time. Um, if you measure all of that stuff, it helps to remind you that it's actually your coordinator of volunteers who's responsible for all of that impact. Because if your volunteers are not having meaningful experiences with your organization through volunteering, they're not going to donate their money. They're not going to become staff. So you lose those contributions. 
So you want to, and you also want to be asking and working with your coordinator of volunteers because one thing I've found in working with coordinators of volunteers is they're so humble when I try and tell them that here they are the heroes of their program, I they will just not even listen to me. Darn it! But but they they need to take on that role because they are the ones who are responsible for advocating to make sure that their volunteers are able to make the impact that they can make. So if you are supervising a coordinator of volunteers, you want to find out from them what would help their program be even more effective. Uh, what is the highest potential of that volunteer program? If the sky was the limit, what could that volunteer program achieve in terms of the mission and vision of your organization? And find out what are your coordinators of volunteers already doing to achieve that? Because they have an idea in their head about how much their volunteers can contribute, and they're working towards that. Um, and if you give them the chance to talk about that, you're going to be impressed. And then you want to find out what, what do they need and want to do next to build up their volunteer program. And how can you help as a CEO, as a senior manager? What resources do they need? Do they need some summer students? Because you can do that for them. Um, do they need some connections to some possible uh, sponsors? Well, you know, you can do that too. If you're willing to invest in your volunteer programs, talking to your leader of volunteers about how to most effectively do that is going to be a really helpful move. So to sum up, um, volunteers have a part to pay, play in pretty much any organizational strategy that you have on the table. So go back into your strategic plan and take a look. What is it that you're going for? Are you looking to double your financial resources um, to uh, double the amount of money you get in direct donations? Are you looking to uh, increase the, uh, the uh, power of your organization and, and the the amount, uh, the, the extent to which your organization is known in the community? Um, are you looking to make sure that in a um, labor market that's getting more and more squeezed uh, and more and more competitive in terms of both the number of uh, employees that are out there to hire and the um, tendency now of businesses to start building in that work-life balance and meaningful job uh, uh, work that the nonprofit sector has always boasted it, it has a has a particular um, monopoly over. <laughs> uh, volunteers have a part to play in all of this. They are the people who are committed to you. They are the people who speak well of you in the public. They're the people who do the work that you need to have done in order to change the world. Um, and if they're going to do all of that, they require investment and care in order to create that return. And that is the bottom line. So, questions? Fantastic, Stacy. Great uh, presentation. And um, I know others are commenting on this as well, but such inspiring stories about our volunteers. It's always wonderful to uh, remember just what a connection they have with the communities that we serve. So that, that's uh, wonderful stuff. That said, let's jump into a little bit of some of the math that you covered um, today. So first of all, um, could you go over the input-output ratio? Um, that you were discussing before. I know a couple of people were asking uh, just for just a quick run through of that again. Sure, no problem. Let me go back and find it on the in the thing. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so ah, why did it do that? Annoy my I bet. And it is down. And just while Stacey's getting her slide deck up, I just want to remind everyone, I know we've had a few questions about some of the links that were mentioned, etc. And remember we will be sending out the slide deck as a PDF as well as the recording, and you'll get that tomorrow. So you'll have access to all of uh, those materials as well. All right, so here's how the ratio works. Um, 
if you think about how many hours a week your manager or volunteer invests, and just for the sake of argument, we'll say, I don't know, they do 10 hours a week. I know they probably do more, but you'd be surprised at how much gets done by a manager of volunteers in 10 hours a week. <laughs> so that's 10 hours a week. Say you uh, have uh, 300 volunteer hours that happen in that week, and that's not a terribly um, uncommon kind of a ratio. Um, so if you've got that means that what that basically means is that for every hour of time your manager or volunteer invests into your program, they're leveraging 30 hours of volunteer time. And then if you have an idea of how much that person gets paid, you can convert that into hour, into dollars instead of hours. So you might see that for every dollar you invest in your volunteer program, you're leveraging um, say a thousand dollars. I'm not going to do the math on that. <laughs> but what <laughs> what happens what, when you when you do that math, it starts to help you see that your manager of volunteers is not just a expense item in your budget. Because if you look at your if you look at your bottom line and you look at how your staff is um, um, accounted for. There's revenue that comes in and there's expenses that go out and your staff time is an expense that goes out. And when funders or auditors take a look at that, they go, oh, you're spending a lot of money on staff. And they say, are you sure you need all of those staff? Because what's missing from that equation, in, especially in the nonprofit world, is the amount of impact that that staff creates. The more that you can start talking about and thinking about the amount of impact your staff that your staff creates, the more obvious it is that you can't actually function as a nonprofit organization without them. So, if you want to uh, if you want to engage volunteers, you need that one hour of investment to leverage that 30 hours of volunteer time that you're going to get out of that. And if you lose that 30 hour of volunteer time, well then, who's going to do that work? Who's going to make that impact in community? What is the point of your existence as an organization? It gets very existential very fast. Um, so that's where one of the things that I always encourage organizations to do, if you're going to talk about volunteers, also talk about how you're investing in your volunteers. So if you're going to talk about how you have 300, uh, you know, 150,000 hours of volunteer time invested in your or coming out of your organization every year to a funder. Also tell them the ratio of your investment to that, because funders can forget that you need that investment, and they just look at that 300,000 hours or 150,000 hours and go, "Wow, you know, great volunteers can do everything." No, they require investment. <laughs> That's what you want to always be clear about. Great. And with some of the statistics, are there any industry benchmarks at this point, or is this a fairly new um, area for the sector? Industry and in impacts in terms of what the ratio should look like? Yeah. It so varies. It really varies. Um, and it's, it's a big part of it is up to the organization to demonstrate the value of the impact it's making. So it may not be that time is the best best um, way of looking at it for you. It could be pounds of food, right? So for every hour of time your manager of volunteers invests, you get volunteers are, are moving 21,000 or, or 20, 2,100 pounds of food into the hands of families that need feeding, right? It, you, the, the ratio um, is there to demonstrate that the whatever impact your organization is making by engaging volunteers has an investment attached to it. Um, and it's not, it's, I don't know that it's possible to compare that across organizations because it's like comparing the value of the impact you're doing. It's comparing the value of a kid who's been tutored and their grade level has gone up to uh, a cat that's been found in a shelter and then rehomed. <laughs> you can't really compare that. The only way to compare that is how the community values that. And as long as you find people in the community who care about your mission and your cause, then comparing those two things doesn't matter. That makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so let's move to a bit of a higher level here and, and look at, um, you know, obviously a lot of organizations uh, in Canada are smaller, they're strapped for uh, time and resources and they might only have one person, you know, working in, in the as a volunteer coordinator. How would you start adding some of this strategy in? Is there a place to begin? Uh, because, you know, we've had a few questions come in saying, gosh, I, I don't even know where I would start with this. I, I don't have a lot of time already. So, mm -hmm. you know, where, where do yeah. I get the ball rolling? Yeah, well, this is, this is actually stuff that, that you can go back to your board with. So it, a, a big part of this strategy is that as a coordinator of volunteers, you, have a, you really have a very focused job on your volunteers. Um, but you can also be telling the story of what you do to your managers, to your directors, to your boards, so that they can understand better the role that volunteers play. So you know that you're in an organization that isn't thinking fully about what their volunteers can do if all your if all you are being asked for is how many volunteers do you have and what's the hourly what what how many hours they contribute. Right? You know from that that your senior manager and your board is not getting the full story of your volunteer impact. So it's up to you as the coordinator of volunteers to start thinking about, okay, what is the full impact of my volunteers? Um, and start claiming it. So when I uh, say that the donations of your volunteers wouldn't happen without you having good volunteer engagement, I mean that. I mean that's your money. <laughs> I mean that that money wouldn't be there if you weren't running a good volunteer program. So if your fund developers aren't tracking that, ask your volunteers. Right? Find out um, what other kinds of contributions they're making. Find out if they talk about the, the program outside of, uh, of the time that they're there with you. And without being asked, report that back up the line. <laughs> um, tell that story. Because if your uh, directors and your board of directors aren't thinking that way, then they should be. They're, gonna, they're going to misunderstand the impact that your program and your volunteers are making. And that's not fair for your volunteers. Absolutely. Uh, and when we're talking about investments in volunteers, could you maybe give uh, some examples? We've had a uh, few people asking, you know, does that look like education or thank you gifts or, you know, uh, what, what are we talking about in terms of, of investing in our volunteers? Yeah. Um, surprisingly, a lot of... Uh, a lot, well, and it's not surprising if you've worked with volunteers. A lot of volunteers don't necessarily want to be thanked. It's a little bit uncomfortable because um, they're not necessarily there for the thanks. It's nice to be told that you've done the job well and that you're appreciated, but really they're there as partners in making a difference in the community. So the thank yous that they, that they want often are more coming from the kids that they're mentoring or from the community where they're making a difference. So those impact statistics can actually be thank yous, right? Collectively, you guys cleaned up, you know, 40 hectares of, uh, of invasive growth. And now we have a, a better habitat for squirrels or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, that kind of impact language actually helps them feel good. So it, you, can, can, you can think about that as, as a thank you or an appreciation. The other thing is, yes, definitely invest in your uh, volunteers with training and access to training that they might not have. Uh, there's a museum, some of the major museums in New York have these amazing volunteer programs training where, you know, volunteers get early access to some of the curators uh, or some of the people who've put together some of the exhibitions because those people are coming in to set up the exhibition anyway. And you've got, you know, these people who need to be able to take, uh, take uh, guests to the museum through the exhibitions. And for them, the opportunity to have like a master's level course with a person who, you know, is, has such standing in the art community that they're able to put together an exhibition for a museum, that's huge. So remember, your volunteers are there because they have a really niche interest in what you're doing. So the contacts and the people of influence 
in your area of expertise hold a lot of value for those, those volunteers. And that can be a great way to both improve your volunteer program's quality uh, and give your volunteers something that they'll really, really value. That's great, and that feeds into some other questions we had about uh, retention, and I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head there, uh, that all of this stuff can feed directly into volunteer retention as well, which is just Absolutely. wonderful. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit, Stacey, about uh, building some of this um, capacity for leadership at the volunteer level. So, you know, can we use some of this to get senior volunteers uh, involved with, you know, engaging other volunteers in the program? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, any of this work that, that, that you're needing to do to demonstrate the impact of your volunteers, you're, you can bring your volunteers on to do that, right? So it actually might be easier and uh, to have your volunteers put together a little survey on how much other volunteers are donating rather than that coming from you as a staff. Because there's like that little weirdness about money and that's the money that goes to pay me and I've just gone and bought groceries with it and now I'm uncomfortable. So <laughs> why do it that way when you can um, pull together a couple of keener volunteers or bring in some volunteers uh, who want to do some program evaluation and say, these are the questions I have. How much, uh, you know, how many of, uh, can you go and interview all of the staff at the organization who used to be volunteers and ask them about how volunteering um, led them to become a employee of this organization? And your volunteers go out and do those interviews, which would be fascinating for those volunteers to do and also super valuable for you to get the results back. Uh, and then you feed those results back to your senior management and suddenly they are, are looking at your volunteers in a different light. So definitely there's, there's the limit on how you can engage volunteers in demonstrating their own impact is just limited by your imagination. And uh, do you happen to know, Stacey, if there's a dollar value that, like an hourly uh, dollar value that's attached to volunteers in Canada, or is that something that's really going to vary from organization to organization? It, well, uh, in the States, they've got a, a general, they, they put together a, a whole, they do some math and it's all complicated and they come up with a number and I think it's like, I don't know, $11 an hour or something like that. Uh, in Canada, we don't have a generally agreed upon. Um, in British Columbia, the gaming um, grants so that many organizations get allow you to claim $10 an hour for uh, frontline volunteers and $25 an hour for volunteers that are for providing some kind of professional service. Um, but you can also take a look at what specific role it is that your volunteer is playing in the, in the uh, organization and, uh, and, and match that to um, a paid work position and use that as your number. Uh, it, 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 it's, in some ways, it doesn't matter that much what number you pick as long as you have a reason that you picked it. Great. And uh, this is a little tiny bit outside the scope of our webinar today, but I think it may tie in a bit with some of the stuff that you've been talking about. Um, any suggestions on, uh, you know, sometimes nonprofit staff all are busy and overloaded with their own work and sometimes can have a little bit of resistance to working directly with a volunteer. Um, do you have any suggestions on, on overcoming that? Which, would you suggest bringing in some of this, this impact work uh, when talking with staff who might be a little bit resistant to uh, bringing on a new volunteer? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there's a, there's a couple of issues there. One is that the attitude towards volunteers and engaging volunteers is a, it's something that you have to put into your organization from the top down. So your, and one way you can do that is making working with volunteers an explicit part of everybody's job description and something that you get assessed on your performance review for. So it's, um, if you start to think about your volunteers as a strategic, valuable impact generator, then you start to have less tolerance for your staff not working with them well. It's like if you gave your staff a $1,000 budget and they threw it out the window. Wow, now you're in trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, why did you throw that money out the window exactly? 
it's the same kind of a thing. If you, uh, if a volunteer gets attached to a staff person and that staff person, for whatever reason, doesn't want to work with them, doesn't want to have them engaged in the program, then you lose that volunteer and you lose all of the potential of that volunteer as a lifelong donor, as a word of mouth ambassador. That staff has just done direct damage to your organization. So if you begin to think about it that way and realize that that's not just a way of thinking about it, that's actually exactly what happened. Because you now have a volunteer who could have been a great resource for your organization, but now is out in the community saying, you know what, I went and volunteered for this organization and they, they didn't have any time for me, they didn't have anything for me to do, they were really unorganized, they didn't call me back. I don't know that you should donate your money to that organization. That's what's happened. <laughs> So if you're okay with your staff performing that way, well, then that's fine, but I wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a good point. I, I, you know, reputation is uh, everything. So it's, it's everything. So you want to make sure your staff understands that a huge part of their role is good community engagement, and that means you know how to work with volunteers or else what are you doing in this job? And we've got an interesting... A pretty hard line about it. <laughs> yeah, well, and it, it, it's, <laughs> it's a good line to have. Uh, we've got a question from Sherry here, which uh, might be of interest to others. Uh, what percentage of the budget should be dedicated to the volunteer program, and that's including stewardship and recognition? Mm, oh, my gosh, that's such a good question. <sighs> Oh, I'm going to write that question down and research it because I don't know. Like, I mean, that is one of those things that there is no rule of thumb around. Um, and I mean, what it comes down to is, what it comes down to is that if you see your volunteers as a key resource in, in, in getting to your mission and your vision, then the amount that you want to invest into it is in line with that the, the impact you want to create with it. So it's in part, you know, there there should be a a, a healthy budget in place to allow a, that would allow a coordinator the time and energy to lead volunteers and engage them across the the board and evaluate their programs. Um, so then that has to do with you know, how big the organization is and how many volunteers you have and what you have those volunteers doing. But you also would want to see line items in everybody's uh, um, portfolio or budget around volunteer engagement. So you'd want to see kind of a line item around uh, uh, in your fund developers on how they are going to find out all of those answers to questions about how much volunteers are giving. Um, and, and integrate that into their thinking. You're going to want to see it in your staff resourcing around um, how do you, how are they uh, helping the volunteer program by providing access to volunteers for to staff training, with the idea in mind that these volunteers might be our next staff. So it's. So I see it both as something that you would want to have dedicated funding to, but you also want to understand that your entire organization and all of its departments are also supporting community or community engagement through volunteers and there's costs attached to that. Fantastic. Well, I, I think uh, we're coming up on the top of the hour there, so I think we're going to cap questions uh, at that one. So thank you again, Stacey. What a great presentation. So inspiring. Um, you know, loved all the stories as well that, that you wove in there. So thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. And just before we sign off, I do want to remind everyone that we are following up with you by email tomorrow morning uh, with the webinar recording and the presentation slides. Uh, we'll also have a link there to a very short survey. If you can fill that out, uh, it's really helpful for us to uh, refine our webinar content and delivery in the future. You'll have an opportunity there to let us know if there's any topics that you want to see covered uh, down the road. So it helps us with our, our planning content as well. I'm also really excited to announce that we've launched the data collection 
section for our brand new nonprofit sector salary and benefits report that's going to be published early next year. Uh, we do need your help with that. So you'll find information in tomorrow's email about how you can participate in the survey and uh, be entered to win an iPad mini. So uh, that's kind of a fun draw there as well. So uh, again, there, there will be links in, in the email tomorrow to um, all of the information uh, that was covered today as, as well as links to those surveys. So with that, I'd like to thank you all again for joining us today, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.